Our assumption is that any service can be hacked, including ProtonMail. The previous security model of the internet was let's build very, very big walls to keep the bad guys out. Um, I think we have seen from Sony, we have seen from Yahoo, and all these other big companies that that security model is one that is destined to fail. Uh, so the alternative security model, the one that ProtonMail uses, is we assume the data breach is going to happen, and then we build it the system such that in the event of a breach, we still have maximal protection of user data. And that is what end-to-end -end encryption manages to achieve. Um, because there's no way that I or anybody else can guarantee you, to you that we're never going to get hacked. The best that we can do is have the defenses in place so that when you are hacked, the data is still safe. Uh, and that's why we encrypt. There are certain countries that uh, we just no longer travel to, um, especially some key people cannot go to certain countries. But what we do is we try from a technology and from an organization standpoint to really isolate these risks. Right, so the way that uh, ProtonMail works is it actually encrypts data um, on you know, client devices before it even reaches the servers. So that means that on our servers, we actually do not have the ability ourselves to decrypt the messages. And if you don't have the technical ability to decrypt messages, uh, there's no way anybody can force you to do it. Uh, and this is an, you know, a way of using technology to ensure security. Because it doesn't matter what country I go to, uh, the laws of mathematics that you know, um, provide encryption, uh, that stays the same. Uh, so that's why it's important to rely on mathematical law instead of you know, legal um, frameworks. You know, security and privacy uh, really is, is a, what we call a moving target. It's constantly evolving. Um, you do something, the other side would do something else in response. Um, and it's about staying one step ahead you know, of the other side. Uh, and it is very much a back and forth, right? Um, but you know, we think that you know, with the internet and you know, the way that things are being built, it's possible to innovate very, very quickly. Uh, so because of that, we can always stay one step ahead. You know, nowadays, people talk about quantum computers, right? And quantum computers perhaps rendering encryption you know, um, are useless. Uh, but at the same time, there's also new encryption algorithms that are quantum safe that are being developed. Uh, so I think, you know, I'm pretty confident that the security industry um, will always have the means to stay ahead because it's something that, you know, there's a lot of resources, a lot of smart people working on it. Um, and we've always been able to stay ahead um, for the past, you know, 30, 40 years. If you look at what um, ProtonMail provides and, you know, what we do, uh, there's a lot of social good from this because it ensures democracy, it allows distance activists to stay safe, it allows protection against uh, you know, uh, cyber crime, right? Uh, on the other side, um, yes, it is true that once in a while you have some bad people using ProtonMail, but if you look at the overall social good that this service provides to the world, um, I would say you know, that it is a cost that is worth paying. Uh, and that's a trade-off that we have to make between you know, our freedoms and our need to prevent terrorism. Uh, I think it's something that society as a whole needs to decide over the next couple of years. Uh, but from my opinion, if we were to give up our freedoms and our rights uh, you know, to combat terrorism, you know, more or less we've handed victory to the terrorists who are trying to take away these freedoms from us in the first place. Uh, so we must stand our ground and uh, we must say, you know, these are our values, these are European values, um, and this is what we're going to defend. In order to finance a service like this, um, you do need to have income. Uh, and the way that we make most of our income is in fact through you know, public sector, private sector, and businesses uh, who are using the security and privacy that ProtonMail uh, provides. Uh, so that is in fact um, that money that we take in that allows us to provide for our consumers the free version. Um, and this is a model that is different than the advertising model uh, because in this case, our interests are actually aligned with our customers, right? Uh, if you look at uh, Google, uh, Google's customer is not you, the user. Google's customer is actually the advertisers. Uh, so there's a misalignment of, of incentives there. Uh, but in our model, um, the people that pay us are also our users. Um, they're paying us because we provide good privacy. So we actually have a financial incentive to ensure good privacy and good security. Uh, and I think this alignment of you know, um, incentives between users and corporations is very, very important uh, to build good products.